Hello and welcome to Stephen University. This week we discuss an episode titled Stephen the Swordfighter. A uh, very quick recap. Um, Stephen, watching these old sort of like uh, Japanese sword fighting movies, decides that, you know, he wa- sword fighting's awesome and he wants to he wants Pearl to demonstrate and she's looking to teach him. So she starts to do that with like a sort of a weird sort of hologram robot version of herself. And then he distracts her with stupid Stephen stuff. She gets murdered outright killed in a really harsh moment she just gets killed then we learn that gems don't die like people do their bodies are damaged they can retreat into the gem and the light version of the body that we that we know that they um that, that exists it sort of reforms and reheals in that time there's also a suggestion that that might there's also a suggestion that the time frame in which it takes for them to regenerate varies because there's a point when amethyst is like oh it's taking ages this time um it's one of the reasons you can imagine the gems have existed for hundreds if not thousands of years as we've had hinted at in the past um then the episode sort of goes on this thing where steven is just waiting for her to come back and in his attempt to sort of in his loneliness and his missing of pearl he attempts to use the <laughs> the hologram robot version of her as a facsimile but it all goes a bit wrong and it uh, turns a bit violent steven cleverly beats it with his steven quirkiness um not you know the shield we know he can produce um, which I would have personally preferred as a solution to the problem than a broom, but hey. Um, and then uh, Pearl returns, uh, and that's sort of that's sort of the end of the episode. Um, Chris, as always, thoughts. I thought as a as a metaphor um, for for how sex toys are no replacement for the real thing. I thought it was strong. Um, I'm, I'm joking, <laughs> obviously. Um, but you could gleam that from it. Um, yeah, you could. Yeah, you're right. That's uh, accurate. That's fair. Go. <laughs> but I didn't gleam that. I just thought that as you were talking. Um, just in case anyone thinks I'm a pervert. Um, I will uh, say. And if anyone, and I will can s- I just say that if anyone does think Chris is a pervert, I can 100% and categorically say, as someone who's known him for many years now, that you are absolutely right. He is. He he really is. Um, it's it's concerning. It's true. We're all we are out in the. Su- <laughs> we're out in the sun the other day and I was just staring at Jess and she was like, you know, you're not wearing sunglasses so you can't, you, you're not hiding that you're just staring at me. I was like, oh, good point. You're very beautiful. Um, and then did you just put sunglasses perfect. on? It was actually sweet. It was very sweet. Then I got some sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> Pretended to read. I'm joking. I was reading. I was very engrossed in my book. That's a story for another time. It's not what you asked. Uh, but if anyone's wondering, it was Nick Frost's autobiography. So, the episode. Uh, yes. My ov- my overarching thing. I got two overarching things. Yeah. Um, one, what a fuck, what a moment when she, uh, when she, you know, dies. It's mm-hmm. Hell of a moment. That's uh, it's intense. It's uh, it's deep. You you genuinely, as someone who, because I'm sat there like, well, presumably she comes back, but then I'm like, well, maybe she doesn't. Like that. You genuinely, I think, watching this at at the stage I'm watching this, don't know. You are a bit uncertain, and Do- that's and that's a real impressive feat for the show because any other show or movie, I'd just go, oh, "She's coming back." But there was a genuine moment where I was like, hmm, "I wonder if they're just getting rid of that character," and I can't even place why particularly. I felt that, so I, I feel like the show awesome. has proven a, pro- a, pro- a propensity to just do things that surprise you at this point. Maybe so. Do you think it's possible that because yes. the show has has done things out of left field a couple of times previously that you sort of went, "Well, maybe, just maybe." Yeah, like, and actually, that's that's kind of point two because there was a bit towards the middle where. She's challenging him to fight the hologram. And I'm like, oh, it's pretty obvious where this is going. Eventually, he's going to opt to fight her and he's going to struggle. And then that happened. But I also thought, oh, and then he's going to sp- be struggling. It's going to look like she's going to kill him. And then the real one is going to come alive yeah, and real defend him. And it's all going to be great. That's You know, and- okay, before you finish that, I just want to add that I that's that was my exact thought process the first time I saw this episode also. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. and then that's not what happens. He actually defeats it himself, and you're like, "Oh, didn't expect that." And that was my overarching thing with the episode. Like that just completely made me go, "Well, that was." I it's weird. I don't think it's as rewatchable as some of the other episodes I've been fond of. So Lars and the and the cool kids, 
maybe even to some extent no not onion time but some of the other ones that onion I've really time liked. that's a different that's a <laughs> That's, onion, an episode, onion, that's an episode. Onion trade. That's an episode where onions onion just trade. late every time, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's on OT again." <laughs> onion time. He gets here about thirty minutes after everyone else. Bloody onion. <laughs> <laughs> onion trade. Um, but so I wouldn't necessarily go to rewatch it overly. No, but I fair. think that's because it didn't have a whole lot of humour in, and the ones that we've said we would rewatch, or the ones we've said we really enjoyed, did have humour in. Mm-hmm. So that's potentially why for that you know um but really liked it and was really impressed by uh by the writing the way the story unfolded um and of course you know all the animation and stuff as always yeah the, well, the animation is is brilliant in this episode the, the moment that pearl uh gets the thrust and they set it up so perfectly it's you know parry parry thrust parry parry thrust and you're just waiting because it's she's she, she they, the way they the way they frame it it starts just becoming a normal conversation between Pearl and Steven, but off camera or you just to the left of it because they frame it physically from an animation perspective as just a one shot on Pearl, which is what you would normally get if the two characters were conversing. But her arm is clearly doing reactions to the parry, parry, thrust. And and like, the whole time she's talking, you're a bit like, this is kind of... It's getting a bit tense here. Is this? Is this? Are they going to do this? And then it's the thrust, and it goes through her. And the way they shoot it, which is Stephen's reaction, and then the shadow of the sword through Pearl's form, which is mm. just what a brilliant way to be both really dramatic and artful, but also like avoid the really gory element of it from the for the kids. Um, well, they do then. Yeah, they do then yeah. cut to a shot where you can see the sword coming out of it. But at that point, they have like they sort of do, do go the magical route and have her poof into the sort of gem. Um, at which point, sort of, it becomes clear that that's kind of fine. But th- th- what's powerful about it as well is the reactions of the other two gems, which is when that sword hits her, uh, you know, Garnet and Amethyst. Amethyst, like, gets up and is for a second kind of serious, and even Garnet looks worried and says, oh, no. Like, and it's like, I don't know, it's a very powerful moment. So that's really and I think good. Go on. That's partly why you think, are they going to do this? Because of yeah. how they react. Because 100%. they don't... They react in a way that makes sense, but they don't necessarily react in a way that of people that know she's ultimately going to come back. But I think maybe that's because this doesn't happen that often, maybe, Mm -hmm. or they never expected the hologram to beat her. Like it's, it's played very well in a, in a, in a, in a number of ways, Mm -hmm. all manner of ways. Yeah. And, and and then in terms of the comedy, I can, I agree with you on the whole, but I will say that I think the final moments of this episode are hilarious. When (laughs) Pearl returns, the house is a mess. (laughs) Garnet's holding a version of Amethyst. This running joke in the episode that Amethyst, she's on this flying cloud she finds in Pearl's room, and she seems to just sort of steal it out of Pearl's room, and then she's just on it for loads of the episode, and then towards the end she eats it and sort of balloons up and starts floating, and then Garnet eventually gets distracted and lets go, and she just goes up into the atmosphere, and then later on Garnet comes back in with Amethyst, and it's like, where have you been? And Amethyst is like, I got hit by a plane. <laughs> It's just, it's like, and Pearl is just looking around at this trashed house, at this ballooned up amethyst, and it's just like, I can't leave you guys alone for like five minutes. What happened? Yeah, that's, that's a great, great build up. Like that's that's the culmination of like two or three plots all coming together in this one little gag of like Pearl being like, Jesus, I'm gone for like how long? Yeah. What's happened? Um, and just to clarify, my the, the lack of humor is not a criticism. The lack of humor was the my reasoning for why. Whilst I enjoyed it, I probably wouldn't necessarily rush to rewatch. Yeah, I think that's. I, I yeah, I think that you're right because once the story is sort of played out, like in the other episodes, even when you had when the surprises are no longer surprising you because you've seen it, what's left? Is that am I right? Is that sort of what you're saying? Like, how much value is there yeah, in an I episode? Guess. Is I, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of I sort of speaking for you, and I don't really mean to be, but like, is yeah, that, and, is that and what taking you're it at? like. Um, Overanalyzing it a bit, as as of course you would in this format. But um, yeah, I, yeah. I suppose <laughs> what else am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but you know what I mean. Like, I just, yeah, I probably, I just, I think more that just compared to something like Lars and the Cool Kids, I would. If you would say to me rewatch an episode, I probably, you know, or if someone was to say, well, what are some examples of great episodes? I don't know. Although I probably would go to this one because it was really dramatic. You know? That's what, it's funny, isn't it? Because it's it's, and we've talked about this before, but it's it's a show that doesn't feel the need to do everything every week, 
And that's mm. to its advantage and then to its disadvantage because especially the way we're watching this one a, one episode at a time. Although I think at this point now the show was just releasing one episode at a time rather than doing the doubles. But I think that it's a show that does lend itself to that approach. You know, that, that you know, watch a couple mm. episodes um, uh, together. Um, and I want to clarify as well, in the early episodes I talked about, you, it, one of the early episodes of this podcast, um, you asked me, you said like, oh, what point did you get to binge up until? And I couldn't quite remember. I said, I think 20, 30 episodes maybe. Um, I've since double checked because I knew which point storyline wise roughly we were at when I watched up to. Um, and it was actually mm. closer to 50, 50 odd episodes that it mm. had when I, when I, when I started. So I had about 50 of these to binge out the gate. So, you know. It's such a weird, and it's not just because I'm watching it, like I got the frustrations when you described it before, because anyone who loves a TV show would get frustrated, but the the way they've released it and stuff seems so weird. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And and like, it just seems like, I. it seems like they've realised that the audience for this show is quite small. So they've just gone off. Ah, I don't care. Like they just they just put it out when they put it out. Like it spits and sort of like bursts. Like suddenly you've got twenty episodes to enjoy, and then you have none. Mm. It's like it, the, the show is not consistent in that sense um, mm. at all, which is a shame. Although I will say that they've clearly finally given them permission to actually spend some money on making the doing a soundtrack. Because from my perspective, recording this now for those of you listening, this already exists. It's already been released. But the uh, we're recording this the day that Rebecca Sugar just announced on instagram and twitter that they're going to be doing a steven universe soundtrack which is long long overdue um i mean i've got a homemade version of a soundtrack on my itunes that i put together myself from various youtube videos and you know other bits and bobs i've sort of found around the internet um but it's not the same it'll be really cool to see like this properly remastered Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a, yeah, I, I'm quite we, excited to see how that goes. We should say actually, at this point, so at this point now, guys, we have released, started releasing this. So, yeah. if you email in, depending on how quickly we record, you know, it might not be too many episodes, or it might be until you you start hearing. You know, if there's anything we need to respond to, we there's more chance of that happening now because from our point of view of recording this we have begun to to release episodes yeah it, t- it took us like in the world. it took us like 15 episodes to actually release one which is weird mm. why did that take so, us so if long? you want to ask any burning questions we're potentially 15 episodes behind but um dan's very good because obviously dan's checking things um but, well i say i was gonna say because uh i'm trying to avoid spoilers but also like I'm lazy. That's Dan's role. Um, he, he does that. Bless him. Um, yeah. Let's see an episode of Nothing But Static. Episode 120 for more details on that. Um, <laughs> in a conversation <laughs> that spirals out of control. Um, but um, but so um, you'll you know Dan might get back to you. So you might get a, you know you might not hear hear your point discussed on air just yet. But you might still get a reply. So feel Definitely. free to contact us if uh, if you've got stuff. Did you notice the um, shift in uh, Pearl's appearance following the, uh, the, the 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 coming back out of the gem? Yeah, I thought she looked. I couldn't pinpoint what exactly was different, but I mm-hmm. I clocked that she looked different. Yes, um, it's quite. And subtle. if I'd have had more time, I'd have gone back and I'd have you know rewound the episode and looked. Yeah, she's not. She used to rewound. wear like. I'm watching of... these on VHS. Dan has recorded them on Cartoon <laughs> Network for me on VHS tape, and I'm rewinding. Well, previously she was wearing sort of like um, like pink trousers, and now she's wearing sort of yellow ones, which sort mm-hmm. of make her the star on her chest stand out. Which previously was um, was it a slightly different shade of color? The, the, the color scheme has shifted a little bit, um, particularly in regards to sort of like the little sort of pants she wears under that sort of skirt thing. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a few cosmetic shifts, but not any major ones. Um, I mean, as I'm sure you can guess, now that concept has been introduced. It, it's not they didn't introduce it for no reason. The concept does come back occasionally. No, but I, my my most, and I should state because I've not stated this, my what I consider to be the most obvious question is the question I have, which is of course, if Stephen is half human, half gem, what 
can he do that or can't he do that? I don't that, know if that gets addressed, but that's that's the question. That well, that's that's a, that's a very good point, and I think that one of the great things they've done here is by setting up this premise that he's half gem and therefore not quite necessarily as capable as the others. That question is a very valid one and gives, I think, uh, future episodes more tension because you don't know if he's capable of surviving things the way the mm. gems are. So it's mm. it's it's it is genuinely a very very it's it's a concept that leads to tension in an area you wouldn't expect it to because someone would mm. some might say, oh well, you know. You've introduced this idea that they can't die. Great, that's that's going to make things tense going forward. But yes and no, because you you've got to think of it from the perspective of the the character that is that is not necessarily exactly the same as the others. Um, but so, yeah. it does therefore become another question that Stephen should ask, but hasn't. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. Then again, like it took them to say last time to him, didn't it? That like I mean, when the last time they introduced a concept, they introduced the concept of fusion. It w- wasn't until the end of the episode that they were like, "Oh, well, can't wait you till you learn this. how to do that." And he's like, "What? What?" Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, uh, you're right. It's, it should be a question he's asking, really. What but... did you quick? Because we're nearly we're nearly at time. But so, what did you quickly think of how they handled him missing Pearl? I thought it was done relatively sweet because he brought those little gem around with him everywhere, talked to it. I yeah. think, I think that's kind of and he clearly he he clearly learnt, which I liked. Do you know what I mean? He even when even when and it maybe it's a little bit of character growth, but I feel like the character even now there's growth because I feel like the character that we saw in episode one when he won and was challenged to another fight. I feel like episode one, Stephen would have gone, yeah, okay, I've just won. I'll fight you again. But this one was like, no, like, I just want to be left alone. Felt like a very adult reaction and decision. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think it, it's it's funny how these things manifest. And it, it, and I think that the, the, the writing of the show has gotten, uh, it's at a point now where it is like they've, they've really figured out like... Um, they have really figured out what their game plan is, which is to to slowly sort of um, shift his character and grow his character. And as a result, like you're seeing little ev- bits of evidence of that here, there, and everywhere. And that's kind of brilliant. And that's kind of what's 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 one of the things that's driving the show right now um, in a big way. And it's something that keeps keeps driving the show as well. So that's that's really cool. Um, like, yeah, I th- yeah, I didn't think of it that way, but you're absolutely right. That is an important moment in a weird way because that is mm. a that is a definite. You're already noticing him changing and growing up, and that's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Cool. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what else to what else to I say. There's anything else, Dan? Maybe there isn't. Oh my god, Chris, we're out of things to say. <gasps> what do we do? Yes. What do we do? F- finish the podcast. Oh, oh, yeah. That seems that seems sensible. Yeah. Oh. I feel uh, I feel daft for panicking now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You should feel. But what yeah. I love is people might think we're deliberately putting on these awkward moments, but trust me, they're they're happening naturally. Mm. Yeah, I I used to I, I when we first started this, I thought we'd we'd really struggle. I thought oh, it's going to be hard to be awkward every week. Well, we'll drop that after a couple episodes. Nope. It's just still nope, ha- still, thing. still happening. So, um see you next time. Yeah, for uh Lion 2, the movie. It's not an actual movie, though, is it? It's 11 minutes long. Maybe there's a movie in the show about Lion. Starring Dev Patel. Yes. Yes. I that should have got a laugh. I'm a little disappointed it didn't. I mean, it, it, it would have got a laugh, I suppose, if... No, it wouldn't have got a laugh. It was. <laughs> I just, just not get a laugh. Sorry. <laughs>